What's up my nerds, this video we're going to be talking about creating basic functions and objects. When we first introduced data types, we talked a little bit how there's primitives and then there's objects, and they're slightly different. So this video is going to give you a little bit more detail on the objects. We're not quite going to deep dive yet because I think there's a lot of more fundamental stuff we should know, but you definitely want to know the basics before you get into that too much because you're going to see this stuff all throughout JavaScript code, so it's definitely important. Another thing that is really important to me is my sponsor, which is Dev Mountain. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description if you want to check them out. Basically what they are is they, they give classes in web development, iOS, user experience, and more, and they offer them in person and online. When you go through these classes, you get everything you need to know to succeed in a job in the industry. So for example, if you go into the web development course, you're going to get content in JavaScript, React, Node.js, Git, and GitHub, and more. Let them know I sent you and you get $250 off. Now back to objects. The way we create an object in JavaScript is fairly simple. So we could say something like let position, and then to define an object, you use the curly braces. So everything inside of the curly braces is known as a property. Now, within the classification of a property, you can also have functions. So some of the properties are functions, but we're just going to start with primitives. So for example, we can have an X, which can have the value 10, and then we can have a Y, which has the value 20. You can console log the entire object if you wanna get the information about it, 10 and 20. So these are the properties or the members of the object. A method is another type, and what a method is is basically just a function that's attached to this object. In general, when I hear property, I tend to think of just values, and when someone says method, I think of doing something. We are going to get into adding methods, but for now I just wanted to talk a little bit about how we can work with objects a little bit more just to get some more practice. One of the big differences between primitives and objects is the way they are passed to different variables. So if I create a new variable and call it my position and set that equal to position, essentially what's happening is we're taking this and assigning it to this. This means if I go in here and console log my position, it should print exactly the same thing. So you can see two exact things printed in the console here. But the question is, are these printing the same object or is it a copy of the object? Because if you remember going back to primitives, if I did something like let x equal 10 and then let y equal x, well this makes a copy of the value. Objects work a little bit different in that if you assign a variable that contains an object to another variable, they both point to the same object. So any kind of changes are going to be reflected inside of both of the variables. So getting rid of these primitives, let's just see an example. If we go past these console logs and we say my position dot x and set that equal to 10, that's not gonna help us at all, <laughs> 15. And now let's console log both of these again. Now when we run this, do a refresh, you can see in the first occurrence, they're both 10. I change one and they both change to 15. So that is the primary difference between primitives and objects, at least when it comes to functionality. There are some differences in memory and stuff like that, but that's all behind the scenes. Now, when it comes to adding properties to here, we can also add methods. So if you wanted to see an example of that, all you have to do is give it a name. So I could call it print, for example, and then we just say function, put the parentheses, and then curly braces, and then anything inside the curly braces is going to be executed. So in here, I could console log the position. So here's how we do that. First off, I'm using the back ticks, which allows us to templatize our string and plug in variables. Now there's this interesting keyword, this, and this is a magical keyword that honestly is probably gonna cause you numerous headaches. Basically this, the keyword this, is going to be used throughout JavaScript, but it always means different things. In the situation of a function that's attached to an object, so in other words, in the situation of a method, this is going to refer to this variable, this instance of an object. So what that means, if we wanna access this property x, we can prefix this dot, and then it'll know that we wanna talk about the x inside of this object. To execute this, all we have to do is go down here and we can say position dot print, and then call it using the curly braces. We don't have to console log it or anything because all of that's being done inside of here. So this is going to do all of the work for us. We do a refresh and you can see it says X is 15, Y is 20. 
cool. This is in contrast to creating a function outside of a class. When you do that, it looks very similar. There are some minor differences. So if you wanna see that, I'm just gonna copy this, paste it down here and show you what that would look like. First thing, the name is going to go after function. So we would say print right there. And then if we wanted to call it, we would just say print. But you might find something interesting happen here. When we do a refresh, it says undefined. And that's because this in this situation is not the same this in this situation. And we're gonna get into this later. <laughs> but just know for now, when you're in a method, you should be fairly safe to use this dot to get the properties. But obviously in this context, there's no such this that has an X property on it. If you wanted to see what this is, you could just console log this, like so. Now when we do a refresh, you can see it's the window object. The value of this depends on the way we call a function. The concept of what this means is known as the function context. So for the function context of a method, the this is always going to refer to this instance of the object. This is in contrast to calling a function as a function, <laughs> which sounds silly, but that's in contrast to as a method. So when we call it as a function, the function context is either going to be the window object as it is here, or when we're in strict mode, which we're gonna get into, it's going to be undefined. So if in here we say use strict, in this situation it's gonna be a little bit different. Now when we do a refresh, we get undefined. All of the rules for this, we're gonna dive into those deep. There are ways to create copies of objects if that's something you're into, so look that up if you need that. Otherwise, just be careful you're not pointing things to the same object and changing it in a way you're not hoping to. There are a couple of other things I wanted to talk about. For example, you can create nested objects. So I'm gonna give it some really creative name. I know, I'm clever. Uh, I need to make a comma after this one. So we can just put an object just right here and we can make the values whatever, like so. So that is a nested object. And if you wanted to access that, you just have to use another dot. So it'd be position dot my object dot sweet property. That's how you would basically traverse the nested objects. Last thing I just wanted to briefly mention to you guys before we go is something called JSON or JSON or JSON, whatever you, whatever you think it might be. So what is JSON? Well, JSON is JavaScript object notation and it's very similar to this in nature, but it's a little bit different. It's just something you should know about. You can find all kinds of examples of JSON on the internet. You can see it looks a little bit different in that the properties are quoted. There's a couple of other differences, but basically overall it looks pretty similar. The reason I'm calling this out is because when you're working with websites through an API, you'll often use JSON. You also use it for configuration in different frameworks, so you definitely want to be familiar of its existence. I'm not saying you should master it right now, but just when someone says JSON, you know it's this, and it's similar in nature to how we create an object in JavaScript. So that's JSON. I'd encourage you guys to do some more research on that. And yeah, with that, that's all I really have to say. So. Hopefully this video just gave you a good introduction. Remember that these things will get ironed out as we go on in the series, so don't pretend that you have to know everything right away. That's all I got for you guys, so I'll see you in the next video.